Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And this is the Kingsong KS S18 review. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. And before we even begin the review, there's a very important announcement I wanted to make about this wheel. This wheel, don't push it, don't accelerate too hard on this wheel because you might experience a cutoff or you will face plant. Just take a look at the recording here. Oh my god, I'm, I'm really sad I didn't record it, but the pedals dropped. Whoa, that was a super near cutoff. Oof. Jesus Christ. Ah. So essentially what happens is when you push the wheel too hard, i.e. accelerating from zero to 40 kilometers an hour, um, at a state of charge with around 75-80%, at 40 kilometers an hour, the pedals dropped suddenly uh, it was overpowered and if i wasn't a experienced rider there would be a very high chance that i would fall on the kingsong ks s18 now there there are a couple reasons for that which i'll explain later but this is a wheel you don't want to push in terms of acceleration it's really dangerous to do that so please be cautious with it especially if you're a heavier rider and if you want to accelerate hard on it. So with that out of the way, huge thanks to myewheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes and of course Kingsong as well. There's a 5% discount on any wheel you order from myewheel.com with the wrong way coupon. And additionally, I wanted to say that I like Kingsong. I like King Song wheels. I think that the KS16X is one of the best commuter wheels out there if you don't want to go like super super fast. In this review you'll hear a lot of pros and cons, 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 but they're based on facts. It's not that I you know hate the company in any shape or form. It's just the things that you know stood out to me after riding this wheel for around 320 kilometers. So let's start maybe with the performance. And as you saw in the first video, um, yeah, you don't want to push this wheel hard. You don't want to accelerate really suddenly because this thing has just 60 cells inside. 60, 21, 700 cells. It is a 1,100 watt hour battery. It's 20 batteries in series and uh, three in parallel, so 60 cells. 84 volt wheel and a 2200 watt motor. Honestly, I think this combination is a bit dangerous, especially with the top speed limit of 50 kilometers an hour in this wheel. Uh, this wheel has battery sags like crazy. If you saw in the first video, it was going from 75% down to zero. And it went into a sort of emergency state because it actually disconnected from EUC world whilst doing the acceleration tests. So yeah that's uh, that's the first thing i wanted to, to say about it when it comes just to the feeling of the kss 18 it feels really you know light and nimble which is nice it feels lighter than the emotion v11 so if you go just between you know zero and 30 kilometers an hour you should be fine you know with, with acceleration and all that stuff it does this uh, really well when it comes to the range it's just about the same as I got white Tesla, maybe a bit less because this actually weighs 25 kilograms uh, now. I did a rage test uh, where it did around 53 kilometers, which is a, I think it's a good result for you know this weight of a unicycle and this battery. I did not accelerate a lot because you know I was scared uh, to to go to go fast on it, uh, but if you drive carefully, you can definitely reach 50 kilometers maybe even 75 I think like Monsieur Flex did in his video. The battery charges with a charger that is very similar to the 
Emotion V11. It's the XV charger, two and a half amps. So zero to hundred percent, which should be around you know, five to six hours. Um, there's just a single charge port in this unicycle, so there's no possibility to you know connect two of them. Maybe with a splitter, but uh, out of the box, you just get one um, charge port. The top speed is 50 kilometers an hour, and this is a speed that you can sustain on the road. I did try it out. As long as you don't do any crazy stuff, any, any super hard acceleration, you should be fine. So you know, it's very similar to the KS16X in that regard, but with just a lot less headroom. Once again, this is a 20S 3P configuration. The, ba the batteries get <laughs> kicked in the butt a lot with this motor. Honestly, I think this should be a weaker motor or, or with a limited top speed to 40 maybe kilometers an hour, maybe 45. Um, I, do, I also did some hill climb tests and it did actually really well. I did a 30 degree hill climb and a 35 degree hill climb. And during the 35 degree hill climb, I had just 25% of battery. Uh, so that's probably why it beeped at the, at the end. But yeah, it, it just performed well there, like a King song should. Anyhow, you saw me climbing up there with the trolley hang handle up. Now, if you open the trolley handle like this and you start riding, you'll face plant. So how to do it is you can either just lift trolley handle and then put it down and now it will actually spin out we'll just ride normally with the trolley handle up and that's how you should ride if you go off-road because you can grab onto the wheel then because once this is down this will just fall I did not do the 40 degree incline sorry but you know that's not happening now um, yeah the arm is actually broken it needs to it needs to heal I, I broke it during riding a scooter so all of this is about the performance when it comes to the suspension the first thing you want to do when you get it out of the box is remove this block and it's very peculiar because um, when you look here there is a block which is around in this area here and there's actually an instruction video by King Song that tells you how to remove this block. So we're actually gonna knock out this block. I'm gonna demonstrate how. So without loosening, you do not need to loosen these. Just go ahead and take something and knock out this block. So you don't need to loosen these. Just go ahead and knock this out. It's just a you know metal block they put it in there for some reason which I don't know which it is and it improves the suspension significantly Miren bañado, en las chanclas, todo despeinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme las chanclas y el bañado. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. So yeah, I just mashed these two blocks out and then the suspension started to work really well. <laughs> Um, it is a DNM damper. It's uh, you know it has a it has a positive chamber, a negative chamber. It also has a uh, rebound adjustment and a lockout feature. So you basically ride like without suspension. And a S18 versus V11 video is also coming up. I'll do that. This will be probably the next video on the channel. And if I would compare the S18 suspension, for example, to a car, I would 
compare it to a Jeep. Because riding the S18 is much closer to a wheel without suspension, it's, it's still very nimble and it reacts onto accelerating, accelerating and braking really fast. But if you hit a bigger pothole, or a, you know, a bump, it will absorb the shock really well. Just with the smaller bumps, I feel like it is a bit more stiff than the V11. And uh, maybe just because of this design of uh, suspension with you know, the, all the additional you know, friction points, friction points here, it doesn't absorb like all the smaller bumps uh, that well. I did play around with different pressures from extreme to, you know, comfort settings from 260 PSI down to I think 140, now it's 180 PSI in the upper chamber. I played around with the negative chamber a bit. I found that actually on the highest setting, it suits me the most uh, because if you have a lower uh, suspension pressure, the unicycle itself will drop down a lot when you just you know stand up on it. So if you have a higher pressure, you just get more clearance. And you know, in the 260 PSI setting, or even 280, um, it's, it's really good. If you haven't seen already, there's a video with Extreme uh, Kingsong S18 uh, riding, which I'll link probably below, or will pop up in the recommendations uh, there. Um, so go check it out, how it rides there. It really does well off-road. It, it does turn you into a stair mobber. And uh, yeah, it's, it actually is also really reliable until now. I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm quite impressed that it stood up all of the abusement I did to it during the recording of this video. The suspension is good. It feels closer to a unicycle without suspension, like just from the behavior. I think there's a, just a bit more maintenance because they recommend to, you know, put uh, some kind of lubricant in here and all, all of these uh, parts should be you know lubricated there's just a bit more maintenance here which i don't like because i you know i have a wheel just because i <laughs> don't like to do uh, all that stuff but overall yeah when it comes to this suspension it's nice it's a bit also connected to the suspension the pedals are also a bit lower than on the v11 there's less ground clearance so just in turns it's a way more possible to you know scrape the pedals or if you want to go up a curb, which is super comfortable, just a bit sideways, then you can also, you know, hit this part or actually also this part here, which is a you know, rectangular block on the lower side of the S18. You pump up the suspension with a regular, um, you know, pump. It is just the same like you get on the V11. And you also get this majestic signature uh, Kingsong block. Now, what is this block for, I hear you ask? Well, it's a block you put uh, in here uh, when you, you know, just stay, you stand up on the electric unicycle because once it's uh, pumped up and, you know, it's in this state, you, know, just, you just can't access the upper valve in uh, the DNM shock. So um, just because of that, you need to put the, you need to stand on the wheel, then put the King Song signature block inside and then you can pump it up. And actually, as I can see here, I had it now in the 180 PSI setting, this rubber part fell off, so it, it did bottom out. So for my weight, which is 75 kilograms and, you know, quite uh, um, bumpy riding, um, I, I would recommend a setting of, you know, 20, 220 and upwards. Uh, pressure. As you can see, I also mounted different side pads on the S18 and there's a reason for that. Number one, they look beautiful. These are the EUC guy side pads. But the, the second thing is uh, the regular side pads just, um, yeah, they, they didn't work for me that well. And let me explain why. Let me just put them off. If you put the regular side pad here, which was attached pretty well, but you know, the ends were flocking around a bit. You can see that maybe from a upper perspective, you see now the side pad on this side is actually wider than here. So this was actually really uncomfortable for me. Uh, maybe it's the foam that is, uh, um, you know, a bit too, too, too thick, or maybe it's just the placement of it that it's, you know, just so high up, but I couldn't get 
comfortable with the wheel even after 100 kilometers. So, um, and, but once you accelerate it, you, your leg sort of falls into this compartment here and then you can accelerate really nicely. But most of the time when you're riding a EUC, you have the legs in this position here. And I just found to this to be not really comfortable. I really liked the side pads here. Um, now, this is also a matter of preference because th these hold you in really, really tightly and you can jump with the wheel all the time as, as much as you like. It's a very jumpy wheel. That, that is something I like about the S18. Um, but it's also a matter, you know, of, of, of preference. Uh, yeah, and these are glued in sort of well, but yeah, nothing too, too amazing. So I removed these side pads and I put in the EUC guys type pads like so and it also flattened out this area here and made the unicycle just way more comfortable and I also had leverage leverage on the wheel here and not when I just and not when I just you know jump into this groove over here going back a bit to the riding I, I like riding the S18 a lot, but in a different way than, than usual. I rode this thing pretty slowly most of the time because it just has a small battery and you know slower, slower riding means more range. Um, but I like the weight distribution as well. Um, you know, it's really agile. It's, uh, it's really nimble. So this is another good thing on the S18. But then again, the S18 is a very, a very niche, product or a product that wasn't that much thought out if that makes sense and and you can see that in many areas uh, when you look at the S18 number one I think at least for me the S18 should be a off-road wheel but it has a street tire now the H5102 um, tire is a tire I really like. I, uh, probably the tire I like the most uh, on the MSX and you know 18 inch wheels. And it's really good actually for off-road. If it's dry, it has a lot of grip. It's great on a street. But once you hit at the trail, the trails and there's a bit of mud or you know a bit of small debris, then this tire doesn't have a lot of grip. It's, uh, it's really slippery, especially when you go on grass, you try to go uphill. It's nearly impossible to do that with uh, this tire. And reason for that, I believe at least, is that in the previous versions of the S18, it had the wider tire with, um, like, I mean, the dimensions were the same, but it's actually a bit wider. Uh, the CST tire, it was rubbing against the enclosure of the S18. So I just think they, they just went with a sm smaller tire to eliminate that instead of you know, changing the whole structure of the electric unicycle. The handle is the next thing I'm really torn apart on because um, why would you want an electric unicycle to ride around off-road without a handle? You need the handle a lot of times when you go uphill, you need to you know, grab it really quickly or you know, if you're just learning, you want to catch it and if it's in there, it's, it just, it's, it's really just difficult to, to grab up on the wheel. And I don't really know why you even would want to, to, to go with a flat design. I mean, it looks good, but it's a really functional piece of kit. So um, I don't really get that. And King Song doing the 18XL, the 16X, basically every electric unicycle they made before, they have the handle sticking out a bit. It's, it's in an enclosure, you have the lift sensor and then you can pick it up, but you can also you know, grab the wheel just in case you are to fall or you're going up a hill and you can't make it. That's a thing I don't like about, about the handle, but it has a reasonable height, it's, it's comfortable. You know, to put it in is also always a two-step process or to put it out, a bit finicky, but you know, just a small thing. And uh, the software adjustment of this, um, Trolley handle is another thing I don't really like because if you have it in this position, the motor is on up to the top speed. But if you have it in this position, it just goes up to one kilometer an hour and it leans forward. So if you want to push the wheel around in this state, you can't do it, it will fall off. And if you try to get on the unicycle with the 
panel in this state, you will fall off. That's the first part of the issue. And the second part of the issue is if you are just traveling on the uh, S18 and if you want to stop and get, get this thing, get the tro trolley handle out, you're, you're doing two kilometers an hour, push it out and it, it won't deactivate the motor. This is, I think, a safety thing, just in case, you know, it would pop up when during uh, riding. But then again, yeah, the, the motor doesn't, the motor activates and it will, it will spin out of control. So if you want to carry it upstairs, you have to come to a complete stop, then take it out and then um, put it back in to start riding. And there's a third thing with the trolley handle. So if you just push it around, you push it around at two kilometers an hour, you put it in, and it's still, uh, and the motor, motor is still on. So once again, push it around, put it in during the pushing and uh, the motor doesn't deactivate. Honestly, I think that the best solution for that, like out of factory by design, is to have a handle which is always in this position, like King Song had over the years. Have a lift switch or a lift button. Uh, if you need to, you, you press the button and you're lifted here and it de deactivates the motor. If lifted up, it works like a tro trolley handle. Like, I don't know why they overcomplicated the thing. Maybe it's just for, for design purposes, but yeah, the, the trolley handle does come with its perks. There's also no speaker in this EUC, so that's a bummer. And when it comes to the lighting, it's just mediocre. It's not really amazing uh, when it comes to the front headlight unit. So it's supposed to be twice as strong as the KSS, KS16X, but I really didn't notice it during nighttime riding. And it's definitely not a wheel that I'm super comfortable with riding in the night without any additional uh, lighting. The, the beam sort of gets scattered because of this plastic enclosure up in the front. And the um, light sensor is also, um, I think, overreacting a bit because when I'm riding in the night and the, there's a lamppost uh, just providing light, um, it just turns off. So. The, the light just turns on and off all the time when you have it in the, the auto setting. So that's why I just would turn it on, press three times, have the lower beam on and just keep on riding. If I ride in the night, I have both beams turned on and basically I never had it in the auto setting but because it just doesn't work well. In the rear, you have the beautiful, beautiful, maybe I can turn it on now. It's a really nice LED light. It also shows you the direction you are heading to, like left and right. It's really bright. It looks awesome. And it also sort of illuminates the uh, suspension underneath. So this works really well. It also has a cool animation where you just trolley gun it around and it just goes zoop, zoop. It's really cool. It also shows you the battery state, but it's not really accurate. I mean, it, it, I can see that it's like maybe up, up to here, but it's not a real, really reliable um, you know, battery indicator. If there was one like up in the front, um, like on the Inmotion V11, or just the usual RGBs that you see on King Song, it would be better than just, just this. And uh, yeah, when it comes to RGB, there is none except for the rear light here. And now we move on to the quality of this electric unicycle. So for that, I will just take the camera and show you all the good things and the bad things I've spotted. Number one, the mudguard should be improved, but basically first day I was riding, it already fell apart and yeah, it just looks like this. It's, it's not enough to, to keep it in. It's not really a you know, well-made mudguard, not for a wheel that costs you know, two to two and a half thousand euro Currently, maybe it'll be cheaper soon. Um, next thing is um, the pedal. This pedal actually can go out. Ow. So there is, maybe you can see it on this side, there is a small metal thing. Uh, I don't know if it's a really, you know, professional um, thing to, 
to keep your pedals inside, but there, I think there's no magnets here and they just put this metal piece here to um, make the pedals stay in place once they're up, but it broke on this side and that's a thing that never happened to me on an electric unicycle. That's the route they want. Um, there's a lot of holes in this EUC. It's waterproof uh, until now uh, when I was you know, riding in the rain or some big puddles there were no issues but actually the, <laughs> the water can ingress from the lower side here and you will get your feet wet from the inside. Um, never happened to me before but actually just happened once on the S18 so I don't know if it's an issue that happens uh, often. Overall there's like this and there's the flap which sort of you know isn't the nicest quality and there's actually you know chewing gum in the charge board. I mean it's not chewing gum but it's silicon doesn't really look, look nice and when you look from the inside here you can actually see that the headlight housing is right there so you can actually touch the headlight there's like no plastic elements there um, yeah, it's it's just sort of there and right away you can also see the cable here, which is you know braided for um, better better durability, but I think that's also a thing that might break over time. It also has to be adjusted in sort of some sort of way to to be working properly, but not really sure how I want to adjust it. That's just um, how it is. Um, it gets dirty <laughs> a lot. On the sides and uh, for, like all here, 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 but that's you know just uh, what comes with uh, the design, like an open design of um, a wheel. Now, uh, all the moving parts here weren't an issue at all. Like during riding, I didn't feel it at all. It was just fine. Like, like, like all the plastics here, like even the a screw here, just on the outside for, for, for some reason. Um, yeah, when, when you just touch the wheel and you see it in person, like it's not a you know stellar build quality. All the screws here that are visible, or all the screws here, the block here, that is just a block, um, yeah. So in terms of, you know, all in all design, I, I think that, you know, it just, I, I just show you all. I, I just show you all the stuff. It's it's just what it is. I, I, the suspension looks amazing. It looks great. Um, it's all overall a pretty slick looking electric unicycle. But if you just um, take a closer look at it, it's really not that good of a build quality. The front panel also popped off during riding, but. I popped it back in, so there were no issues at all. Maybe when it comes just to the you know fall protection, it, it's actually better now because I saw the Alien Rides video where it just this, this thing just you know fell apart. Um, I think this is better, but overall build, build quality is. Hmm. It also, by the way, comes in the white version. I just got the black version uh, from from King Song. It's really nice to ride this thing seated. So I did that a lot of times, it's just a flat area here. You can even put the bat backpack up in the front if you want to carry something. I found that nice. This wheel beeps at you all the time. So for example, if I were just to connect to EUC World, I press on the King Sun KSS18. Why so many beeps? I don't get it. And if the wheel is charging, you will get random beeps. Like maybe it's just the fault of my phone, maybe it's the fault of EUC World, but if you don't disconnect from the wheel uh, with EUC World, uh, it will just randomly beep at you all the time. So I'm just putting a camera here because it randomly beeps. Let's see if it happens again. Why are you beeping? If the wheel is charging, it's cool that you can you know, check the battery level, but it will beep at you a lot. So just turn off UC World uh, when uh, this wheel is charging. And last but not least, I want to talk about the pricing. Now, this wheel right now comes at the same price, a very similar pl price of the Emotion V11. And I will do a comparison of these two wheels, but Honestly, for me, this is a wheel that is definitely sub 2,000 euro. 
Um, maybe, you know, 1,700, something like that, because it's new and it has the suspension. But for what it gives you, it's a very niche product because um, it has a great suspension. You, it can go off-road, but you don't have the tire to go off-road, for example, in mud, but you can do it in sand. No, so, sand not really, but in dry dirt or rocks, rock crawling. It's something that uh, this does really well. But then again, if you go off-road and you have to come back really quickly because it will drop below 50 kilometers really fast if you push the wheel all the time. It has the 2200 watt motor, but you can't really use it because you will face plant. It has twice as powerful lighting, but it's really not that good, not that good after all. The things you can do with it is, you know, riding downstairs, just having a lighter suspension wheel than the V11 if you really need that. So you can, you know, just uh, put it into a trunk more easily or you just don't need the range. You just need a wheel to hop on and hop off to work. Um, but for the price, um, yeah, and, and, and the quality you get, um, I would definitely, you know, weigh all the pros and cons before purchasing the Kingsong KS-S18. I still do like the wheel a lot, I love it. Uh, I love how the suspension works, it's, you can jump with it, you can have a lot of fun, but um, it's sort of like an Alfa Romeo, you know, <laughs> that's uh, what my friend said today. Um, you know, <laughs> maybe it doesn't have that many issues as, as an Alfa Romeo, and it's not that fast, but um, if you're getting this wheel, you, you have to know what you're getting into because uh, you just might be surprised when you get it. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. King Song, please don't lock me up. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell for this. <laughs>